If it wasn't obvious by the extremely funny thumbnail, we're going to cover a blade that is technically a spoiler, so if you are not past Chapter 7, this is your official spoiler warning. You have five seconds. Okay, today we are going to be covering possibly the best pure healer blade in the entire game. That's right, I am talking about Blade Nia. When it comes to keeping the party healthy, there truly is no blade better than her. Unless you get one shot of course, but besides that, with Nia in the party, you'll likely always be near full health. Unfortunately, this isn't nearly as useful as it sounds, as pure healing isn't a super necessary niche in this game, and oftentimes other healers can offer easy full heals much easier and much more, and there also exists plenty of ways to full heal regardless, or just not get hit at all, and this greatly hinders Nia's viability. Regardless though, being the best healer has to count for something, so in this video we will be covering Blade Nia, all of her strengths and weaknesses, and how to use her the most effectively in combat. If you enjoyed this type of guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of the future blades, both good and bad, because it does help out so much. So Nia is the final story blade we have to cover, and the last exclusive blade we have, only able to be used by Rex. I don't know if she would have been any better on other characters, but Rex is who we're stuck with, so let's talk about it. Her auto attack stat is pretty high for a healer, so that's good since that directly affects her healing art, and her block rate is also pretty nice for a healer. Her crit rate isn't that fantastic, but that isn't really that important. Her defense's values are 10% physical defense and 35% ether defense, making her much tankier on the ether side. Her stat mod is 15% health mod, which is decent enough for even more survivability on Rex, and she has a cooldown of 4 when maxed out, giving her some decent availability. All that aside, let's check out her skill tree because it's an interesting one. Her first ability, Cellular Stimulus, will restore health equal to 5% of damage dealt from auto attacks at level 1, rising to 12% at level 5. With how good damage gets, this makes it very easy to keep Rex's health topped off when you get in the maxed on trust, and the percentage is still pretty high even before that, making it a pretty solid source of self-healing. In a vacuum, this is a good skill, but I don't know if I would say it is a good skill on Nia, and to discuss why we need the context of knowing her other skills. Nia's second skill is Instant Regen. This will add a 25% chance of restoring 4% of Rex's health after taking a hit at level 1, rising to 12% at level 5. This is easily Nia's worst skill. Not only is it one of those RNG chance skills, but the effect isn't really that significant of health recovery at all, and given the other forms of healing and health regen you'll have with Nia active, it's hard to say this is a good skill at all. It also just relies on first getting aggro to take damage, and then only having a chance to heal some after that. Not a good skill, and this really should have been something better. Fortunately though, Sea of Plenty is probably Nia's best skill. This will restore 4% of the party's health periodically when at max affinity at level 1, rising to 8% at level 5. Periodically, in this case, is basically every few seconds, and this is actually really good. It's continuous health regeneration for everyone, and the effect is much more significant than you'd think. It also works during chain attacks and level 4 specials, making it actually very nice for keeping your allies healthy if you can't use an art currently or something. This skill is what really makes Nia probably the most effective healer in the game, because it allows her healing to be effective for the party even when her auto attack strength is low, so she can act as a good crutch for the late game. It is a legitimately very good skill. However, with just this skill and a couple other sources of healing, you really do not need the other two skills she has at all. It's completely overkill to have them, and as such, they accomplish nothing. It isn't like they affect the entire party or anything, either. As such, this kind of makes Nia not all that great when she could have been much better. We'll get more into that later, though. Let's talk about her specials. Nia's level 1 special is Last Hope. It's got some good speed, but not much else. As a healer, Nia isn't really about strong specials or blowing people away with her damage, so that's to be expected. To make up for that, the effect is that it heals you for 20% of the damage dealt. To be honest, this isn't even party-wide, which is kinda odd for a special like this to only self-restore health, especially on Nia, who has zero problems keeping Rex healthy at all times, so once again, the bonus effect here feels like overkill. It is a physical-based special that has three hits, and as I said, it is pretty fast, so it can be nice to use for its speed, but it isn't offering much besides that. Funnily enough, the damage ratio is slightly higher than average, being 315 at level 1, 470 at level 5, and 504 at max affinity, but this doesn't really make it do any damage anyway. Nia isn't really about damage though, so I suppose she gets a pass. Nia's level 2 special is Merciful Heart. 
The special is actually even faster than a level 1, being a single hit, ether based special. The damage ratio is about the average, starting at 420 at level 1, ending at 580 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity. It has no modifier and nothing that notable about it besides speed once again. It does drop 2 health potions when used, and that's at least some party healing, so that's helpful for keeping your allies alive if the 8% every 3 or 4 seconds isn't good enough. Good special for speed, not that great for much else. Nia's level 3 special is Redeeming Strike. It is a 2 hit ether based special and unlike the first 2 specials this one is kinda slow. On the upside though it actually has some unique properties. The first is that it has a radius of 100 meters which is tied for the highest range in the game so it will hit basically everything on the field. It is also basically a full party heal since it restores 50% of the damage dealt to the entire party so this can be good to use in a pinch when you need health on allies fast and it also begs the question why the level 1's effect is so much worse than this. Outside of that, I suppose it isn't all that special, but at the very least it's a good special for healing and hitting multiple enemies. The damage ratio is pretty standard, 525 at level 1, 680 at level 5, and 714 at max affinity. Good special for healing if you need it. Nia's level 4 special is Divine Sword. It is basically just a more powerful version of her level 3 having the same effect of restoring health to the entire party, and having a pretty powerful damage ratio of 1150. It even comes with a 20% critical hit mod, so if you want to do more damage with Nia, then this special might be for you. Now, it's only single target compared to her level 3, but otherwise it's pretty much superior since you wouldn't use either special for speed anyway, and her level 4 has additional benefits like freezing the driver combo and allowing easier fusion combos. Nia also has two other level 4s she can use if you have Pyre in the party, but truth be told they both aren't really that good so we're not going to worry about them. All in all, Nia is pretty much focused entirely on healing. Even her arts on Rex reflect this, having a potion art and a flat healing art. The other two arts don't even have reactions or stages of the driver combo, and given her skill tree and this, Nia truly offers nothing to you besides healing. She's good at that, of course, but sadly it's just overkill much of the time when there are plenty of more effective ways to heal from blades that will offer much more to you. However, I recognize Nia is popular, so let's take a look at a setup that I think is pretty beneficial to her. The core chip you want is the Takyan chip. It gives the best mix of stats for her and the decent bonus effect of improving her healing art further so it's always a full heal on everyone. Any extra crit or block rate you could get from other chips aren't really worth it if you ask me. For aux cores, I am running Affinity Max Attack just for a bit of extra damage even if it isn't really her thing, making her just a bit more impactful and fights can still help. I also have Affinity Max Barrier because this is just some nice mitigation that allows Nia to be more supportive for the team. And the final slot I have Art Stealth because Nia is a healer and does not want aggro. You could likely find other ways to be supportive or have fusion combo up here since I do end up letting her contribute to those with my current build. For accessories, I am all in on a supportive setup that lets her contribute to the team. Carbon Gauntlets here give her a way to charge up her specials even faster so they can be used more often. If you combine that with the Crystal Earrings, you get a ton of party meter for special uses, so you can use more chain attacks so your ally can carry your pitiful damage. Round all of this out with a burst symbol for the ultimate chain attack support that keeps the party healthy when you're not in chain attacks. It goes without saying, but Nia appreciates strong allies. And also keep in mind that the 8% party restore periodically also works during chain attack, so if you get low on health you can just launch a chain attack and that'll heal up your party members, so it's actually really really good. Since this is all about healing, we won't driver combo lock enemies, but I will be bringing along Tora simply for break. Other good accessory options on Nia could be the critical symbol, resurrection symbol, sigma drive, or whatever else might be good to support the team. For pouch setup, victory smoothie and hot ruby steam bun is a great setup for art recharge and party meter, so it's what I would personally recommend you run. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Nia practically. So like I said, I'm bringing Tora along with this for break, and I'm also going to bring Elma. They're just both two really high damage dealers who can do a lot in chain attacks, so that is the goal here. Plus, Elma combos with Water Well. She can use Dark Tide after using I use two water abilities, and that's going to give us a lot of damage with her level 3. Tora can also use Pandemic, but we don't have a way to finish off the win combo because I didn't bring anything to do that, but that's not a big deal. So I, ideally, we'll just set up a um, Dark Tide as quickly as we can and do a pretty powerful fusion combo with it if we can. With Redemption, we can keep the party healthy along with our um, auto restoration every couple of seconds, which is very nice. We have the health potions dropping on the ground. 
And as you see here, Nia's not really carrying much of the damage herself, but with her allies, she can do a lot of work. It's worth noting that I think in this fight, Tora has a um, Tachyon Scarf, so that increases the duration of Break even further, so we can actually get a really powerful fusion combo if we really want it. And I think that's what I end up doing here. I just use Aqua. And then we're going to chain attack on this, because this would be a double stack fusion combo, because we use two driver combos on top of the break. And that's going to give our allies quite a bit of damage here to finish off this fight. Nia herself, like I said, does not do much, but she's done a great job of keeping the party healthy, despite us not, like, driver combo locking or evading its attacks or anything. So that's very kind of her. See, we didn't actually even need the second round of chain attacking, but, you know, that's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and flex here. Maybe Nia actually gets a damage cap there with her single hit special. That's really good for her, so we're, we're really proud of her there for hitting that one damage cap. Ideally, though, this was just a very basic version of what I wanted to show, so... Let's show off a more spam-heavy chain attack setup in, um, against Cloud Sea King Ken on normal mode and challenge mode where he has 50 million health and a lot, much higher defenses and everything. So this is where we're going to be able to see the true potential of Nia, I guess, if that's a supportive blade. <laughs> Which is basically just using specials, getting a bunch of party meter really quickly, and then trying to set up some fusion combos for some nice powerful chain attacks. We're already almost maxed out on party meter here. I changed Tora's accessory slightly to have a crimson headband now. And we already have full party meter. We just gotta wait for Tora to break again. I'm gonna use Venom Water, and then we can have a nice chain attack here. And that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll be able to set up the, um... Next chain attack right after this. With Elmo's really fast and hard hitting level 1 and Tor's really good level 1, we can get quite a bit of damage this way. And 50 million health can go down pretty quickly. Just make sure you're setting up like a fusion combo before actually doing a chain attack that's going to give you quite a bit of extra damage, which can be very helpful. And with Saber Slash and Redemption, we have a Potion Art and a Healing Art. He keep our party healthy. And if we don't have that, we still have, um... Nia's bonus effect at max affinity. Sometimes she loses it when you chain attack, but if you get max affinity again, then you get the barrier automatically, and then you automatically get to heal during the chain attack again, so that's very nice. So we got Break Dark Tide here, so now he's going to have an orb on it, so we can get an even more powerful chain attack this time that ends up being two whole rounds. And then we're going to use Nia's specials again and get that party meter right back. So, you can see Zeke's health is rising during this chain attack. He's already back up to 7,000 now, which is very nice. Like I said, that's basically the benefit of having Nia's um, ability in these chain attacks. I think I ran out of Max Penny. I don't know why that happens. Sometimes Nia will randomly lose a Max Penny in chain attacks. Uh, I don't know if it has something to do with her being like too far away from Rex during the chain attack or something, but really it's not a big deal because if you refresh Max Affinity, you just get the barrier again from the Ox Core setup I'm running, so that's still helpful. <laughs> It's not like it matters. Yeah, it looks like she ran too far away from Rex. That's not a big deal. We'll get it back. We'll get it back. We can still use a special to get um, basically all our party meter back. We're already back at max party meter. We can chain attack once again. Isn't that wonderful? Just go straight into another chain attack here. So yeah, chain attack spam can be a viable strategy. You don't have to set up like super powerful orbs or anything like that. It can be just a good strategy to just use more chain attacks. So you'll have invincibility, you can do a lot of high damage attacks pretty quickly. And if you have a really good way to build party meter, it is a viable strategy. And that's what we're going to be using Nia for. So unfortunately he does get Tentacle Storm off right here, but that's barely doing anything to us thanks to the um, healing at max affinity, our, our barrier, and our level 3 special. So, everyone's back to full health, even despite taking that attack, and that is the power of Nia. We lost Max Finney again, but now we're going to get the barrier right back once we hit Max Finney again, because, you know, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and there's the absorb damage barrier. There you go. So, yeah, I guess it's a good thing when you lose Max Affinity with Nia, <laughs> with this setup, because you just get it back and then get the barrier back. Anyway, we used Dark Tide again, and now we have... We're almost at the point where we can just pretty much finish this up. Pretty much one more special here is going to finish it up. We'll use Nia's and get the Max Finity here. This level 3 will give us our remaining party meter. We've got it on a break, and we can just chain attack and finish the fight now. 
Funnily enough, it looks like Zeke almost got one-shotted there, which would have been the one weakness of Nia, as I already stated. But now he's going to just get some health back during this chain attack pretty quickly. So that's very nice. If he wasn't going to die here, then, you know, Zeke would still be full health because we just have this chain attack to heal him up. So yeah, Nia's definitely a really good healer, and um, if you set her up for support, you can have a lot of success with her. We were able to take down this enemy in uh, only three and a half minutes, which is actually pretty dang good. She's definitely not a world ender, and healing isn't always the most required, but it can be useful at times. Look at Zeke, he has full health again, and he was at one health before this chain attack started. And it's not like we used a special to restore his health, that was just Nia's passive healing. So yeah, Nia's healing is definitely good. The problem is more so she doesn't really offer much besides that, so if you want to just use her, you're probably going to want to build her support with um, a bunch of setups that you can probably use on many other kinds of blades. But that also doesn't make it any less effective. You can run any setup you want in this game and have plenty of success, and that is one of the things that I really love about this game, and one of the ways you can use Nia to have a bunch of success, if you ask me. I don't really have much else to say, so I thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something from watching this guide, and are looking forward to all of the other blades in the future. And if you like Nia, I'm sorry for being a little harsh on her, but I like Nia too, so I hope you can just take some solace in that fact. Thanks for watching everyone, have a great day, see you soon.